Hello everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm Notorious Dub and today I'm going to be going over how to stop one of the biggest problems plaguing ranked Valorant, one-sided games. Now in pretty much every rank, games seem to swing heavily one way or the other and a ton of people love to chalk it up to smurfs or bad matchmaking and that may be partially the case. But there are actually built-in mechanics in Valorant that lead to these one-sided snowball-y games that seem to just spiral out of control. And not to mention we're just playing the game wrong when it comes to shutting down these games snowballing out of control and keeping it competitive. And in this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the mechanics that cause these one-sided games and exactly how we should be changing up our playstyle to prevent these types of games from happening at least against us. But before we get into all of that, the question of the day is what do you think costs you the most rounds in Valorant? Personally, I think I fall into the trap of playing a little too passive with my team. I pretty much always want to default, play it slow, bait out utility, and pick the fights I want to take on my own terms. But if my team's not playing slow, I have to speed it up and match their play speed, which is something I always notice way too late and it's a common problem I see a ton of people on my team having and even something I notice pros and streamers having problems with as well when they play with a team they're not familiar with but I do know a ton of people have all kinds of different problems and that's exactly why I want to hear from you so let me know what you think is costing you the most rounds in Valorant in the comments section down below and I'll see you there now first and foremost we have to understand the game mechanics that cause this snowball effect to happen and it's mostly due to the economy in game and the ultimate points in the game as well but the reason other similar games don't have this problem as much is because there's just not as much money going around as there is in Valorant, which in turn causes winning teams to absolutely stack up a bankroll that becomes near impossible for the other team to break through. This causes the team that was losing to have to win multiple rounds in a row to even get close to having an economic advantage, while the team that was initially winning only has to win one round to put the losing team back into economic trouble and force them to save a round again. This basically means that the team that is on the win streak gets almost two rounds guaranteed every time they win a round because the losing team is getting one buy round and one save round so they can buy again on the next round, while losing team is only getting one round per win because the other team is still going to have enough money to buy their guns multiple rounds in a row. And the beginning of this economic disparity starts at round three. Now either way, one team is going to win pistol round. Whether it's you or the enemy team in the standard meta right now is for the winning team to hard force up as much as they can on the second round so they have weapons to win that round with, then they have 3000 credits in the bank and they can then hard save or bonus round for the next round so they can establish their bankroll either way. But worst case scenario, the other team wins the round, but that just means they don't have enough money to buy guns for the people who died in that round, and it resets their loss streak, so the team that originally won pistol round still has the economic advantage. They also have a huge chance of winning the next round and set themselves up to snowball for the rest of the game while the other team is getting almost no money, 1900, whenever they lose that round and cannot force buy back. And winning this round almost guarantees themselves the next round, so it pretty much locks in a 4 to 1 lead. And this happens twice per game, each half, and it leads to huge momentum shifts and snowballs very early in the game. But the entire goal here is to stop this from happening. So how do we do that? Well, the biggest root of these economic problems starts with saving way too much. But before we go on, remember, if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. It's backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcapped, improve that KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. Now, one of the biggest problems I see in Valorant is that people view save rounds as a round to just speed run because they have no money, probably won't win the round anyway, and they just want to get it over with so they can get to the next round where they have money to buy what they want. But players don't realize that one flawless round for the enemy team gives the winning team enough money to coast on for the majority of a half. And that's exactly why in pro play and major tournaments, we almost never see full save rounds. Because it's not always about winning the round. Sometimes it's best to just get a few guns off of the enemies so your future wins have more of an impact. And this is the economic pressure we have to establish and understand, so there are a few different things you can do with save rounds. And the one that's gaining the most traction and ranked was covered in our new save round meta video, where instead of full saving one round and forfeiting it fully, you buy stinger and light armor for two rounds, and then you're able to full buy on the third. Now the full details are in that video, if you want to stop by and watch it, I recommend you do so, but it delays your full buy by one round, but it trades off and gives you the firepower to pick up kills and keep the enemy economy down, all while giving you the chance 
chance to actually snag one of those rounds. But then we also have strategies in pro play that are more common where teams often just buy Sheriff, Ghost, Bucky, or Frenzy, whatever they can afford on their save round, which makes them able to buy a rifle and light armor instead of heavy armor on their next buy round. But once again, it gives them that little extra firepower to pick up a couple of kills, make the round more expensive, and make your future wins worth that much more. So regardless of what save round strategy you decide to stick with, you have to find a way to start making those rounds expensive for your enemies. And if for some reason you can't buy anything, you have to stick very close to your teammates and cross your fingers and hope for a couple of trade kills at the least. But the economic problem isn't the only thing that causes this snowball effect in Valorant. There are a ton of strategies that require you to play a certain way to hard counter them, and failing to do so can ruin an entire half for your team, so you have to adapt to the enemy. Now the most common thing I see people getting ran over by is flash characters, mostly Phoenix, but this goes for all flash characters. And they are insanely easy to actually counter if you're playing against a Phoenix or a Breach. All you have to do is have one person on your team play anti-flash, which basically just means that person is designated designated as the one person that's going to sit a little bit behind the team wherever they go and their job is to stay out of line of sight of the enemy's peak locations because you know the enemy is going to be flashing through before they peak and whenever the audio cue of the flash goes off that's your cue to swing out and your job is to kill the person who's peeking out to kill everyone who's blind and thinks that everyone on the team is going to be blind and this works whether you're taking a sight defaulting or holding a post plant just have one designated person playing anti-flash if the other team has a problematic phoenix breach or even a the sky sometimes. But against the Reyna it gets a little bit different but it's honestly much more simple. Simply make sure you're not peeking anything alone and always always shoot the eye. Even if you're in a terrible spot and the enemy Reyna scares you with where she peeks out with her flash, it's best to just shoot the eye instead of you and your teammates scrambling, losing all of your pressure, getting stuck behind corners and risking getting picked off. If you're not alone, just shoot the eye for your teammates and shoot the eye for yourself. So if you all shoot at the eye, it gets broken very quickly and you can all be ready to trade out on the Reyna who's going to peek aggressively. But aside from flashes, there are other strategies you have to adapt to. So there's the operator and there's shotgun. So both of these are very strong strategies that I see people just get absolutely ran over and it turns the tides of games. But there are easy ways to counter both of these. So when it comes to the operator that your team keeps peeking and dying to for whatever reason, you have to realize that the weakness of the operator is taking over a bomb site. Whether it's retaking on defense or taking on attack, it just doesn't do well at that position. So the goal is to keep control of the bomb site, force the operator to fight for control. Now as attackers, you should be smoking off your entrance to the bomb site, walking up slowly, and then dump your utility and flash out of the smoke to overwhelm the operator if they're there. And then defenders should simply be tucking in the bomb site, telling their teammates to not be exposed, and force the enemies to hard clear you. Because the operators are awful at card clearing corners because of the slow walking speed and the fact that they have to stop for much longer than a rifle does to become accurate. And initiating takes on a bomb site without a pick with an operator are absolutely awful. And then for shotguns, you're going to do the exact opposite because a lot of times team will have trouble against people who play with shotguns because it's so much different of a play style. But it's also very easy to adapt to. So when the enemy has a save round or they're just running over you abusing the shotguns, pick the most wide open bomb site like C on Haven or A on Bind and abuse that bomb site until they stop killing you with the shotguns. Here you're going to smoke deeper than you would normally, so you have more area to control with your rifles. And don't push those close angles. Swing them from very far back so you're not going to get one shot if you have to clear something close. But all you have to do is play those long angles, force them to push into you, and make sure you're smoking deep so you can take control of more area and have more room to play around. But these are just the most common adaptations that I see people needing to make on a game-to-game -game basis. And I'm sure you're going to run across a ton of other strats that you just can't get over. But when you're being ran over by something, think about what the weaknesses and strengths of the strats that the enemy is playing and try to change things up. And the next huge tip and a personal pet peeve of mine, I have to say this, stop playing for retake. Now I know this is a dangerous thing to say, but if your team isn't winning their gunfights, playing for retake is one of the worst things you can do because you're forcing your team and banking on them having a good coordination and playing near flawlessly for that 15 second retake. And it's often just too difficult for a typical team because the rotations are too far for them to actually wait and group up together and the entrances to the bomb sites are too narrow for them to know actually how to play together. Together. But that doesn't mean you should be suiciding on site. When I say stop playing for retake, you should be looking to do a few different things. First of all, the biggest thing you should be looking for is early information that the enemies are going to be pressuring your bomb site. So you should be taking early angles to get information, but angles with a very low risk of you dying. Like on A-Side Haven, you can post up at the corner of Long with a tiny gap where you can see the cross into sewers and have all of the information that enemies could be there. 
If they are there, just call it out and make sure you get someone on site with you before the enemies get there. And if they aren't there in the first 5 to 10 seconds of the round, call that out for your team as well, and they should be stacking the C site with one extra player instead. From there, having two people on site and teammates rotating to help stop the site take is a great position to hold a bomb site from, and it's so easily achievable just by playing for early information without the risk of you dying. And if the enemy does come to your bomb site, don't look to control the entire bomb site and stop the push by yourself. You should look to control an area of the bomb site and force the enemy to play off of a little bit of control that they have instead of controlling the entire thing. This is like a site on bind. Everyone loves to rush down a short, drop the sage wall if they have one, and plant right beside the truck. But if you give up that area of the site and even give up U-Haul control, it doesn't matter that much. You can sit near the bench and back site and deny the plan for so long until your team gets there to help you out. And that's the type of position you should be looking for. Playing for a retake doesn't mean to run away, give up everything, and hide until your team gets there. The proper way to retake is to control what the enemies are giving you and pressure as much as you can to stall out until your team gets there while still being as safe as possible doing so. And the final quick tip I have is the reason I see so many teams getting ran over when they're on defense, taking 50-50 fights. Now a 50-50 fight is when both teams have the money to buy and you're just taking a fight so it should just be a coin flip for who hits their shot and wins the fight, right? This is a very bad fight for the defenders to take because whenever the defenders win, they go up 5 people to 4, but they still have to spread the map and play with the uncertainty of where the enemies are going to be, so they can't really abuse their one man advantage. But when the attackers win, they go up 5-4 to four and can 5 man rush a bomb site and make sure that their man advantage actually plays a role in the round. Which basically just means that getting the early kill as a defender doesn't mean nearly as much as getting that early kill as an attacker. So, play smart for control when you're on defense. But feel free to take those aim battles on offense because in the long run it's going to benefit you a tiny amount if you're winning half of your fights. And if this is something that you're doing, you're costing yourself a ton of games because Valorant maps are naturally defender sided. And giving the advantage to the other team when you're supposed to be winning most of the rounds is going to be the cause of that snowball effect and cause you to lose way more games than you actually should be. But remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcapped.com. Link is in the description below. But as I always say, it's the combination of all these techniques that are going to make the biggest difference in your game. So take the time to think about these things in your game and slowly work them into your own playstyle. That way you can start cutting down on those huge losses and making those lost games more competitive. Competitive. But I'm curious, let me know in the comments down below if you've had this problem with games being so one-sided. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notification bells on because we here at Skillcapped have a ton more comprehensive premium guides coming your way that you're going to want to stay up to date with so you can stay ahead of the pack. As always, I want to thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us, and I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.